Hey there everybody, welcome back to the channel. It's been a while, I've been away for a little while, just needed a break, but I'm back and I'm doing a much requested video today. We are gonna take a look at playlists and how to go about doing them. Um, had a little bit of trouble trying to get this to work myself, uh, so I'm going to demonstrate how I finally figured it out for you and hopefully that will help you guys out to do your own playlists. Okay, so for me, you'd think I'd be starting on the PC, but I feel like the best place to start is on the Mini itself because there's a little thing we gotta do before we get into making the playlist. Okay, so make sure your memory stick, or USB stick rather, is in the system and select it. Okay, now you're gonna see how I've laid out my stick. This is how I have it um, on the root directory. Um, what I've done is I've put the, a few of the games that I know need uh, a playlist in a folder called multi-disc games just you know to keep everything separated and to keep it like you know so everything works basically and you can find what you need when you need to find it um, as you can see I've got my ADFs up here and I've got my WHD load games here and these are just sort of similar little bits and pieces that go with it I've also got applications which has got things like workbench and stuff in there too this is a folder we are focusing on and the reason I'm on here first is because obviously we all lay our sticks out differently but the point of this M3U file is you have to direct it to the right place okay so now we know that the games that are going to require multiple discs uh, and obviously a playlist in itself are going to be located in this folder okay so I'm going to click on that and you'll see the yellow at the top where it says uh, forward slash multi disc games forward slash you're going to basically copy this when you get on to um, making your playlist okay so what you want to do first of all obviously when you do your playlist you want to do multi-disc games forward slash if you're doing it this way okay whatever way you lay the folder out is the way you lay it out this is the way i've done it okay uh, i'm going to demonstrate for you um, flashback okay we'll demonstrate this one I've, I've already done this playlist cruise for a corpse um, i'm not going to demonstrate anything working at the moment we'll look at them afterwards but I'm going to do flashback for you. So what I would do is click on flashback and there's my games. So the way we're going to layer it out on the M3U file will be multi-disc games forward slash flashback forward slash and then it's going to be the names of the four discs which you can see on the screen. Okay, so that's the way we're going to layer it out. I'll put the text up on the screen. That is what we're going to be typing onto the stick and Hopefully, we'll say a little prayer. Hopefully, it should work. Okay, that's the reason I wanted to show you it on here because I think it's important that you see the file layout on here. Um, I've selected this, it doesn't come up at the top, but obviously, you're going to copy basically the yellow up the top. Um, and then, obviously, when it comes to the final forward slash, you're going to put the name of your disk in. So, let's go back to the PC and I'll show you exactly what I'm going to do. And then, obviously, we'll bring it back to the mini afterwards. Okay guys, so here we are on the PC. I've already opened up a notepad. I'm pretty sure you know how to do that on your own system. So, like I said, what we are going to do is, first of all, to make an M3U file, we're going to write a notepad, save the notepad to our desktop, and then change the extension to turn it into an M3U file. I've already, as you can see, done it for the Cruise for a Corpse game, which I did um, earlier on my system. We're gonna type out the one for flashback. Okay, so my stick's plugged in here. And as you can see, we have multi-disc games here, which is where I'm putting all these games. And we have flashback. So these are the names of my discs. And when you put the name for the disc, and don't forget to include the .adf as well. It needs the whole thing. Because obviously when you click on the name here to copy and paste it, it will only highlight flashback one. You know, you need to make sure you highlight the whole thing when you're doing it. So what I'll do actually is we'll, we'll just copy and paste that in first up. Now remember what I said, you need to direct this to where it needs to be, okay? So going back to the beginning, we have to send it through multi-disc games. So we'll come and paste that in. Right, multi-disc games, and we do a forward slash, and then we need to tell it, obviously once you double click, to go to the folder flashback. So let's just copy that from there, easy enough, isn't it? So we'll paste that back in and then we forward slash it and then we tell it to go to the disk disk one okay now you have to do this for all four discs so probably the easiest way is to highlight the whole thing and just copy and paste it in 
four times. Easy enough. And then obviously just remember to change your disk numbers. So number two, number three, and number four. Okay, now that should be it. So give your file the name. I'm going to make sure I get saved onto my desktop. Um, and obviously we'll just call it flashback because of what it is. And that's what you need to do to help you find it later. Um, now, I'm going to change, save it to my desktop before I move it. So we'll just save it on here first. So I've just got to hit refresh. I don't know why. For some reason, my desktop things take ages to show up on. It's really weird. Okay. So now there is our text file. What we will do, let's just shrink that in a little bit. Change the extension on it to M3U. It will ask you to confirm that, obviously, and you do yes. And you'll notice the icon changes now to the music player. Okay, now location wise, we will put this here. There's a reason for that because obviously the M3U file we've just told to look for that folder. So it's going to from there, it's going to find that folder, it's going to go in there, then it's going to find that folder, it's going to go in there and then it finds that disk. You could cut a step out of this, and what you could do for your folder is, sim uh, for your file is simply, so what, we'll do that as well, just to show you it works this way as well. You could just put your M3U in there, but you would just need to change this bit. So if you change that, because it's not, you're not telling it to go into the multi-disc games folder now, are you? It's already in there. So if you change it to that, and we'll save that as flashback text again. So this is how you know you can you can put these in any folder, basically. Um, right, obviously I'm going to have to move that one off of the desktop because it's going to it's going to overwrite it. Otherwise, when I change it, but so we'll change this one to an M3U as well. But no, obviously we haven't put the multi-disc games direction in this folder. We'll see if both work. I'm pretty sure they will. But it, again, it like it all depends on where you place it. So this one will work if we place it in this folder. Let's make sure we drag it first. So that one is going to tell it to go into flashback and then find the disc. This one is going to tell it to go into multi-disc games first, then flashback in there, and then find the disc. Okay, so we'll, we'll use both, and that will show you that it's definitely where you direct it from, if that makes sense. Um, yeah, and it kind of proves the point, you know, and it also means that you can put them anywhere. So if you prefer to have all your M3Us available on the root, then you can do it the first way, you know, make sure you put the, that folder in and anything. If you prefer to go into your multi-disc games folder and have them all in here with the folders for the games themselves, we'll see if it works by skipping that step. Okay, now the big question, will they work? Let's go on to the A500 Mini and we'll find out. Okay, so here we are back on the Mini. We're gonna go straight to the stick, no messing about. Okay, so now you can see, first of all, we have the flashback um, playlist here, which is the one that which I directed to go through the multi-disc games folder first and everything else. So we're going to try that one first. So as usual, you select it like you would if it's a game disc. Just select it and then you hit the home button to start the game. And you say many thousand prayers <laughs> that it's going to actually work. See, I kept getting the workbench coming up here after it went white. And obviously I know that's not right. But... Looks to me like we're in business. So you're going to get your crack screen, as is the way. We'll watch it all the way through to make sure it is actually going to load. Remember with this, obviously, like I said, you can set it up any way you want, as long as you direct the playlist to actually follow your file structure. I haven't run into any issues, but I have heard somebody say you can't have a certain amount of games in a folder. So if you had like 
250 games in a folder or something or any more than that, it wouldn't work. Uh, I haven't tested that theory, so I don't know for definite, but there may be certain circumstances in which it won't work. Okay, I don't remember what we do for this, but oh, I've actually just, <laughs> that's not what we do because I've just um, probably just enter a letter in, I guess. Mm, just press enter on that, I'm sure that'll work. Maybe not. There we go. Just fill the whole thing out. And it was absolutely correct. That's what you do. And you can see flashback is loading. Let's just press buttons and make sure we get into the game itself. I mean, I like I say, hopefully this is going to work with every single game that you try. I haven't tried anything more than like Cruise for Corks was five discs. And here we go. It's working. And still one of the best games ever made, Flashback. I absolutely love it. <laughs> Not sure if we can speed it along, but anyway, you get the picture. It is working. I don't think I need to prove it any more than that. So let's come out to the menu. So way method one works perfectly. Let's try method two, which is obviously we'll go into this folder and we'll use this little one here. Uh, what I'll do actually is I'll select Cruise for a Corpse. So you know I've switched. So you know it's a different one, okay? Just in case you might think to yourself, we well, didn't change and you use the same one. Well, I'm using this one now. As you can see, look, see, we've skipped the step. We're already in the multi-disc games folder. So this should only need flashback and then the disc to work. So we'll see if it does. I always press the wrong button when it comes to that. Okay, so load it up. Let's go hoping and praying that it's just going to do the same thing again <laughs> and not make me look like an idiot. It's certainly looking good. There we go. Yep, into the crack screen again and it's going the same way. So doing it both ways, it may be like you may think, well, why did you bother? Why not just show me one way it works? But we can show if I show you both ways it works, you can see that it is key that you whatever folder you put it in, you direct it from that folder, from that the next step in the process. So obviously, like I said, if I left it out of the multi-disc games folder, the first one I have to tell it to go into that first, then into flashback, and then to the disc. If I put it in the multi-disc games folder, obviously you don't need to direct it from there, so you can direct it to the next folder and the disc, etc. Um, and once again, I'll just come out of that because there's no need to go into that one. Uh, also, I might as well just while we're here, just show you that I did Cruise for a Corpse. Um, that is five discs, as you can see. And Cruise for a Corpse, let's go on it. And just prove that this works as well. I always get nervous because, like I said, uh, when it wasn't working, Workbench would come up after like three white screens and, and I, I was getting frustrated because I just could not get it to run. Make sure it just goes past this stage. I love all these old little crack things. It's amazing like to see them all up there. I think this is another game that has a bit of a copy protect as far as I can remember. It's been a long time since I played this one. Bloody good game though, to be fair. I haven't tried, like I said, a playlist with anything like, you know, um, beneath the still sky levels of uh, discs, but as you can see with these, let's zoom in, they are working. Let's click the button. It's a creepy old music, that one, isn't it? Unfortunately, I can't control how long they take to load, but there we go. So I think we just select any of these, don't we? Uh, oh, yes, okay. Uh, yeah, that'll do. Seems correct. <laughs> God, God love the old copy protection systems. At least this is better than rocket ranges when you have to put the fuel in every single bloody time you fire to another country. I mean, that is just so difficult. I mean, thankfully, I've still got my original copy of Rocket Ranger, so I can use the decoder wheel for it. 
Okay, we've got the music. And there it is, Cruise for a Corpse, working perfectly. And what you would do, obviously, let's just show you that, is you would change this exactly the same way that you do normally. So press Home and R, and that gives you your other discs. But obviously this one needs disc one, so we don't want to mess it around too much. But that is how you change your discs anyway. So it's the same deal as before. Sorry, let's get that going. And you could do this for like, if you wanted to just do it on your two disc ones to save messing around. I mean, I'm not gonna bother, but you know, it's uh, if you wanted to do that, you could. Let's come out of this because the music is incredibly loud and I'm trying to talk to you people. So there you have it. Uh, it's, it's fiddly when you don't know what you're doing, but it's fairly straightforward. And I'm pretty sure most of you, have, by now I'm so late on this process that probably a lot of you have done it already. But this video is for the people that are not quite sure or if they're not, you know, if they're having trouble running it and everything else. Uh, like I said, you can copy my file structure if you want to, uh, or as long as you direct it from your own file structure and make sure you put the right things in, the right um, slash as well, because I did, I did that wrong as well. On occasion, I put backslash in on all of them, and it was only when I went into the A500 bin and looked at the structure itself that I realized it had four slashes in. And I was like, ah, that's my mistake. And as soon as I corrected that, I got it working. So. You know, it pays to, you know, if you can't get things working, just investigate thoroughly. And uh, or if not, if you can't, as always, ask questions in the comments and uh, I or one of my lovely viewers will try to help you in any way we can. OK, guys, hope you find this video helpful. Thanks so much for watching and uh, thanks for subscribing. If you haven't already, then please do join the gang and subscribe to the channel and like the video and share it with people that you know are getting an a500 mini hopefully that will help them i know it's releasing in america i think uh, a week or two's time it's certainly towards the end of this month so i hope uh, if you're watching in america i hope you're loving the machine and i hope that these videos will help you when you get your a500 mini to set it up the way it needs to be and uh, yeah I'm, i mean i'm enjoying it i'm having a blast but yeah there's still a few people being negative out there of course uh, we are all entitled to our opinions my opinion is I'm loving it and uh, it's making my Amiga emulation life nice and easy and uh, it's doing everything I really want it to. And there'll still be improvements to come, I'm sure. If there are a few games that don't run smoothly, they're on it pretty pretty frequently. I mean, this last update went up with an error and it was literally fixed within 24 hours. Okay, guys, thank you so much for watching. Hope this helped, like I said, and uh, please let me know in the comments if it did. And, uh, you know, talk to me about any other things you've got going on with this. And, uh, you know, just talk in general. Thanks, guys. Take care. See you on the next video. Bye for now.